Hello, welcome to this next installation of MathBot 3D Artists. And as you can see, in this video, we will be actually modeling a potato chip using the equation of hyperbolic paraboloid. And I'm not joking. So as you can see, look, just look at this beauty. So uh, we will be using attribute VOPs to control our geometry. And let's see how we can do this. Before we begin, I just want to mention real quick that if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting the asset files while doing that, maybe consider subscribing to my Patreon on patreon.com slash song. Or if you're not interested in subscriptions, you can get the asset files from my Gumroad page. Links in the description and in the comments below. However, if you don't want to, you don't have to, because the videos will remain on YouTube free forever. So, you know, learn at your own pace and let's get started. Okay, so let's get back to our object. And if anything that I do is a little bit too quick for you, I have the video playlist that will get you started with Houdini and will get you started with attributes and VOPs. So check out my channel on playlists. There's a lot of videos explaining how to use all of this stuff that we'll be talking about in this video. So first things first, let's start with a grid actually. As you can see, this is kind of like the final version of it, but let's build it from the very beginning. So let's say we have a grid with the size two by two. And to actually illustrate what we're going to do, let's split our paint top to bottom. And here I will go to geometry spreadsheet. Uh, by the way, you don't have to do this. This is only for illustrating what we're going to do. Okay, so we have point zero one two three, And for example, if I press S, two and select this point and then hit T, you will see that I'm able to actually manipulate the point. However, as you can see right here, you will see that our position in Y axis for the point number zero that we're actually, you know, basically moving around, it changes. Or in the X axis or in the Z axis. So whichever axis we're actually, you know, currently moving around, you can see that we indeed are changing the position. So let me delete this edit. And what we're going to do is subdivide this geometry, right? So let's do the subdivision. Let's see depth, for example, five. However, as you can see, it doesn't really look like a smooth on the edges. So what we're going to do is we will change the point attributes to sharpen on edge boundaries only. So now we have some geometry that we can work on. I'll collapse this. And now we get to attribute VOP, shift enter, enter, and here we are. So what we need to do is first look up our hyperbolic paraboloid equation, which stands for Z equals X squared divided by A squared minus Y squared divided by B squared. In this particular situation, the A and B are just parameters. We can, you know, disregard this and work only with the X and Y. So let's first get the position of our points and convert them into floats so we can work with each axis on its own. It's done by vector to float. Again, this is all explained in the introduction to attribute VOPs for Houdini playlist. So again, if you don't really understand what's going on, just check out there. If you are fine with that, let's just proceed. And here we have the X axis, the Y and the Z. And now if we do the float to vector, so we can write our position back. And if we connect everything like this, you will see that everything, well, it's kind of works. However, we're not really doing anything because we do not do any mathematical manipulations, operations, or anything. We just convert vector to float, then we gather them back and export position into position. So basically, we're doing nothing here. However, we can now start to tweak the y-axis using the positions of our points in the x and z. First, what we're going to do is we can get the power. And power is, well, basically the exponent to make something uh, squared, we get the x into value and the exponent will be two. As you can see, if we get this power into our y-axis, we already see that something is going on. However, this is not enough, obviously, as our equation states, what we need to do is get the another power. It will be squared as well. And it says y squared, but since the Houdini, as you can see, has the z-axis going from front to bottom and 
the y-axis up and down. We actually don't need the y squared, we need the z squared. If we connect this to y-axis, you'll see that it does the same thing, but against another axis, as you can see. The final part will be to actually subtract. And we subtract from the x squared, the z squared, and this result will get into here. As you can see, the result is basically what we want. However, uh, we can actually make it work a little bit better right now. So as you remember, we disregarded the A and B parameters. So what we can do now is kind of bring them back, so to speak, to tweak this result a little bit better that we want. So what we need to do is we will divide it by constant. And as you can see, we can tweak the divider kind of like this. And yep, as you can see, we already kind of have its almost perfect result. To finalize, what I'm going to do is tweak the size of our potato chip a little bit. A little bit shorter here, a little bit longer here, as you can see, all is well. And let's introduce the waviness to our potato chip. We can do this by introducing stripes. Now, they are in the patterns. You can see the stripes going here. However, as you can see, we need some sort of U, but let's talk about this just in a second. What we need to do is we need to add the amounts, the stripes amount to our result equation. And well, basically we do that by adding. So nothing, you know, spectacular here. However, you can see that everything just goes up for whatever reason. And it's because the stripes do not work as expected. So for personal visualization, we'll just get the amounts into the color so we can see what's going on. Everything is kind of gray. It means it's roughly 0.5. And well, as you can see, nothing works. That is because we need the U. In our case, it's just the direction in which the stripes should appear. So by just trying different things, Okay, that's a little bit too much. Uh, let's increase the frequencies. And let's divide the output of the stripes because this is displacing them too much. Okay, so as you can see, we guessed correctly. We could just input the position on the x-axis into the stripes and it will give us the result that we need. As you can see, we can input y into u, we can input z into u. It will just basically go the other way, as you can see. But in our case, what we need is the X. Now uh, we can increase the frequency just a little bit, increase the blur a lot, kind of like this. That's pretty much it. As you can see, if we forget to divide the displacement of the stripes, you will see if I, if I remove our division like this, you will see that stripes affect this too much. However, if we bring it back, you'll see that it does what we need and I think we can increase the frequency just a little bit more, like seven or eight. And this looks, and this looks pretty good. The final thing I want to do is basically pull extrude a little bit, kind of like this. Don't forget to output back. So we have geometry on, on the bottom and on the top. And finally, we subdivided it once again. So it kind of smooths it out and it looks like we want it. So again, this is our result. Let's check out how it looks in stage. And as you can see, it's just rotated a little bit differently. However, it doesn't really matter much because, well, you can transform it to, well, basically whatever you want with it. And there you go. This is our potato chips. Let's say copy and transform kind of like this. So there you go. This is our potato chips that we modeled using the equation. So again, what we need to do is we need to, from the get-go, we have to have some points that have some coordinates position. In our example, they are positioned. Again, in the geometry spreadsheet, we can see that the only coordinate that is zero, zero axis is Y. Everything else has some values. And we do our equation using the well basic math and we control the position in the Y axis using the results of our math operations that we get from the position of the points on the X and the Z axis in our case. So that 
is how you model potato chips using hyperbolic paraboloid equation inside of Houdini using attribute vops. Hopefully this was kind of fun. If you want to learn more about math for 3D, don't forget to subscribe. If you have comments and suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them. I try to read all the comments on YouTube. And with that, I wish you a good day. Hope to see you in the next videos and bye-bye.